Hello, welcome back to another episode of First Impression Friday, where I review a entire pattern collection. We look at all the patterns, talk about their design, their fit, their fabrication, and all the wonderful things that these sewing patterns have to offer. It some it um kind of oscillates between indie patterns and big four patterns depending on the big four season releases. So after we had a few of those for early spring, we are back with an indie pattern. And I'm going to try and say Linaline, Linaline Patterns. She is French. Her website was written in French and then is being translated to English. So we might notice a few little kind of grammatical type things, but we are going to do our best with it. She's got about nine different patterns here um, and a typical kind of backstory like so many of us. She was in the corporate world, tired of being overworked and underpaid and decided to explore her passion of designing sewing patterns. So here we are. Um, the very first one is this top and I'm trying to get it to open. Oh, there we go. Maybe, oh gosh, what have I done? What have I done? Oh man, I don't know what's happening to the website. Okay, did I do it? <laughs> I think I did. I don't know what happened. Um, obviously, because this is a uh, French-based pattern company, the prices are in euros. So us Americans or Australians or otherwise, we're going to have to do a little bit of conversion, but I think you can manage. So for 10 euros, we have the Elia top. Perfect for hot summer days or evenings. This fitted top will be easy to wear. It has an asymmetrical neckline that will highlight your beautiful shoulders. A discreet cut on the front creates a pretty ruffle. It can be sewn with or without the strap. You will love to wear this top and combine it with other clothes. Okay, and then from there, here is another description. Fabric requirements are all here. Sizes... 4 to 8 and then 10 to 16. Is that what that means? Hmm. And then the length is from 5 foot 11 to 6 foot 11. That doesn't make any sense. Huh. I don't... Mm, fabric 140 centimeters, 4 feet 7 inches wide. That's like 60 inches, okay. I don't know what this means. Oh, yeah, I can't make heads or tails. Sometimes I get that they're trying to like make this like a chart without having to actually import a chart, but sometimes having a chart is just really helpful. Um, I'm, I'm assuming this means the length of the fabric. So it's 60 inches wide and then you need six or seven, or I'm sorry, five or six feet of it. Well, that's almost seven feet so six or seven feet of it which that's like two two yards plus okay I think that's what's happening here she's trying to convert it into our you know our inches and feet and yards and all of that but instead of using yards she's using feet and inches so you have to kind of do even more math but I think we got it right okay then you need interfacing and sewing and surging thread um and then fabric wise, she advises to use cotton linen, uh, viscose that's not too thin, um, thin wool or denim. I don't know what plumetis is. Maybe like eyelet? And then additional information, three out of five difficulty. I think this is the sizes, 36 through 48. Comes in English and French. Here is our size chart. This makes a lot more sense. Um, here's our UK, I'm sorry, US sizes, um, four to 16, which means a bust of 33 up to 42 and a half, and then a hip of 36 up to 45 and a half. So definitely not one of our size inclusive indie pattern companies. Pretty much just your straight sizes here for the record my hip doesn't even fit into here and I am a size 
uh, I think 16 in ready to wear. It's been so long since I bought ready to wear. But my hip, I think, fits a 16 in ready to wear and is several inches off of this. So, you know, <laughs> I think we've all said everything we can possibly say about that at this point in this video and others. But let's take a look at some of these pictures. So, the Elia Top, um, I can't really read that. Oh, it's a website and at um like an instagram handle your sizes line drawing difficulty okay so it's a little woven top um and it's got a thicker strap uh which comes down to this asymmetrical um shape here and then this strap is optional and then it has this really pretty like wave thing kind of going through it what's nice about this is that it is like lined or like double double faced so that you cannot see the wrong side of the fabric. So often, especially like in big four, they'll just have you do like a baby hem on this and then you can see the wrong side. And I don't know, it's just not as beautiful as it can possibly be. So, um, let's see some other views that we have here. Oh, there's the back of one, possibly a little bit long in the back here. Do you hear the girls? They are up close. I don't think we have any kind of darting. Uh-oh. Um, it's not indicated on the pattern. That might help some with this. And again, it does feel a little bit long and bunchy through here. The arm side looks really nice, especially in the back. Yeah, I think a lot of these drag lines would go away if we had some darting going on. And this too, whatever this kind of gaping situation is, I think that would be eliminated. But it's cute. I like it, um, you know, on its face. I like the design of it. I don't love asymmetrical stuff, but, but yeah, I think this one's nice. Oh, there is a dart. Okay, well, that makes me want to rethink everything that I've just said. Maybe the dart's not big enough for her. Like, maybe she needed a full bust adjustment or something. Because, do you see? I mean, maybe it's the way she's posed. I don't know. It's really hard to tell if they're not just standing perfectly straight. But there's just a lot of drag lines and bunching and stuff. So maybe this just isn't big enough. Or um, the top itself through the bust was not cut in the right size. But something's happening there in the bust. You can see it really well there. All right, so that is Elia. Next up, we have the Matt V top. And I am so sorry to all my French viewers if I am butchering these French names. <laughs> this one is a long sleeve top. Uh, stretchable fabric is needed to make this garment. Two possibilities are available when sewing this top. One uh, with an asymmetrical cut and the other without any cuts. So you can either do this little cutout or um, leave it out and just have like a regular long sleeve t-shirt. Um, nine and a half euros, jersey, mesh, and everything stretchy, that's cute. Um, so you need your wide, 60 inch wide fabric, uh, stay tape for shoulder seams and that asymmetrical opening. Sewing and serging threads, double needle for jersey, if you don't have a cover stitch, and then height and size. So she turned this one into a chart, which is what I was having problems with the last one. I don't know that the chart is super helpful. I think what she's saying is you either need four feet, seven inches, if you're sewing up to a size 44, or four inches more if you're sewing up to a size 56. No, 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 that's fabric width. Fabric width is here, length is here, right? That's really hard to understand. Um, to make this model, you need two measurements, the waist and the waist. <laughs> oh man. Um, so it's also a very small chart and you can't make it bigger. So I think she probably means the bust and the waist sizes. 
So I think this is up to a 49 inch bust and a 43 inch hip, I'm sorry, waist. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. All right, additional info is a two out of five difficulty. All right, let's take a look at some of these photos. I do like this little cutout. I think that those are really fun and kind of a little bit edgy maybe, um, taking your t-shirts to like, you know, a cool fun level. You don't really see it every day and ready to wear. So it is something sort of unique to us. Now the question will be, can you just hack any old t-shirt and do your own little <laughs> and do your own little lima bean cutout, finish it and call it a day? Or do you really need the pattern to help make heads or tails of this? I will say that the ease on this pattern feels right. Like everything about this the way it's fitting her bodice looks really good. It might be a teensy bit long in the shoulder and therefore long in the sleeve, but that could also be just a little bit of preference, whether you like your tops to sit at the edge of your shoulder or if you like for them to sit in the joint of your shoulder. Um, so some things to consider there. There it is and just, you know, without the cutout. Very fitted through the like up uh, the high hip or lower waist, however you want to look at that. Due to it being so tight there, I do feel like it is riding up on her a little bit. She might be more of a pear shape too. It does look like she has kind of a nice curve through here. Um, so you know, obviously I don't know what size she made, but you know if we factor in the hip measurement, um, we could get closer on getting that to fit right and not right up. Is that the beginning? Yeah, all right, so Matt B. Matt B's cute, Matt B's fun and different. Certainly, you know, we look at a lot of indie patterns around here and a lot of those pattern companies do have t-shirts, um, but I gotta say, none of them have that little, you know, I really love basics with a twist. That's what that is, a basic t-shirt with that little cutout just makes it a little more interesting. Okay, so this is the Sasha skirt, neither too long or too short. This slightly faired skirt will fit most women. This beautiful piece will elongate and refine your silhouette. The elastic at the waist and the bias cut of the skirt will give you the freedom of movements. I have said this a million times. I will say it again. No matter the shape of your body, I don't care what you think your problem issues are. A bias cut skirt, dress, top, whatever it is, will look like a million dollars on you. You will feel like a million dollars. It's magical. What happens when you cut these kind of like lightweight drapey fabrics on the bias is magic. Just pure magic. If you've never tried one on, made one, any of that, you must. You must. It is one of those like YOLO moments. So maybe it's not this one, maybe it's another bias cut garment, but you've got to try it. Trust me. Trust me, okay? <laughs> All right, the description here is fabrics are satin, cotton, viscose, silk, and lightweight fabrics. Then you need 60-inch fabric. I still don't know what this means. Um, and then you need one inch width elastic that equals your waist minus two inches, and then sewing an overcasting thread. Um, this is drafted for someone who's 5'5". Five five. To make this, you will need two measurements, the waist and the hip sizes, and the, these are inches. Okay, so I guess this is body measurement chart. So there you have your body measurements. And then a two out of five difficulty. All right, let's look at some of these. The line drawing really doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't really say much. Um, but hopefully when you see this on, is this her? I don't know if this is the owner or not. Um, but it's the same model in all the pictures. So I'm assuming maybe it is. There it is in a cute little dress down situation with like an overlay. You can see the bias there, kind of how the stripes in this fabric are. I 
kind of a lot of the same um, photos, and I do wish she would have shown the waist seam. But you get the idea. Can you just tell how this is like, it's hard to explain how it feels when you're wearing a bias cut garment, but it just hugs all the right places and then floats away from all the places you want to hide. Like it just knows how to flatter your body. <laughs> That's funny. Um, you can sort of see the waistband there. I do feel like this is a high waist garment because she's got these sweaters tucked up pretty high. I mean, there it is, I guess. And, and it's elastic, but not with the casing. You know what I mean? Like it's an elastic waist garment, but doesn't look sloppy like that. This actually looks really polished. I, I mean, like I said, if you've never made one before, I highly recommend. Um, she was obviously styling it for like fall and winter with those big chunky sweaters, but you can really wear them year round as well. All right, next up we've, oh, good gracious. We've got these Vlad trousers. Ten euros, wide and very comfortable pants with a belt that incorporates an elastic at the waist. These pants have pockets in the seams, but can be made without pockets to make the sewing process easier for the beginners. Wear with a sweater, a t-shirt, or blouse, anything you like. You can see the line drawing there. Um, fabric would be linen, rayon, jersey. Be careful to choose only jersey that stretches in the direction of the width of fabric meaning a two-way stretch jersey velvet cotton twill flannel and gabardine fabric for 60 inch wide fabrics this has got to mean the pattern size does pattern sizes go up that high yeah up to 56 all right so this is the pattern size and this is how much length of your fabric you will need I don't know what this means. The fabric height? I don't know. Uh, a straight grain strip of fabric. You just need a little bit of it. So some kind of, um, some kind of scrap fabric. An elastic that is one and a half inches wide by the length of your waist minus two inches. Sewing an overlocker threads. This pattern is available in two size ranges and four ranges of height. Okay, so that's what that is. So if you're petite, she has these patterns drafted for you already. If you're tall girl, it's drafted for you as well. And if you're in the middle like me, you fall somewhere into one of these two categories. You can choose the size and height range you need. For that, look at the size range. After the purchase, you'll receive an email for downloading with a PDF layout Oh, this is all new information. You have A4 US letter print at home in AR large format to print at your favorite coffee shop um, and step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, so the two size ranges are 34 to 44 and then 46 to 56. So it cuts off right about here. And... All in all, the waist goes from 23 and some fraction up to 43, and then the hips go from 34 to 51. So this adds these four sizes to the straight size category that she's had in her other patterns, making it a lot more inclusive, still not as inclusive as we like to see. I think um, in speaking with some of my plus size followers they like to see the hip up to 60 um so getting closer um but not quite but it's nice to see that i could make this <laughs> and more people just in general can make these trousers so we've got an elastic waist maybe multiple little casings here this is your side seam pocket and pretty straightforward the rest of it there's not a lot of frills with this one here's the like pattern cover is it bothering anyone that these these stripes aren't symmetrical? I I just my eye is like not having a good time right now. <laughs> um I can't tell if these have side seams. 
It didn't say that they didn't, but is this the only fabric we're going to get? I mean, from what I can see, stripes are really hard to kind of analyze, but from what I can see, the rise, not the rise, but the crotch length looks good. You know, this isn't like hammer pants drooping down. Um, the crotch curve looks pretty decent. You know, nice wide leg. Nothing's bunching um, too much. Nothing looks that weird at all. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit too much fabric through here for her. I want to see the waistband, please. Okay, so she did one of those little French tucks again. Um, she also, I want to point out, posted a lot of pictures without her hands in the pockets. Thank you very much. But if we could see a nice close-up, this is a better, um, I don't know if it was her uh, pose or how she was standing earlier, but this crotch looks a lot better than the last one we saw. These are all normal. You need all of this stuff to sit and move and all of that. But yeah, I do wish we would get some close-ups of these waistbands so that we can see what we're dealing with. But all in all, in terms of the photos that she did give us, um, I like that there's a bunch without her hands in the pockets. I don't know what it is. People, when they make pockets, they feel like every single photo has to be like, look, it has pockets. <laughs> but I like to see how it lays without that. And this looks pretty good. I mean, all these photos are pretty far away and they're also like, small on my screen like you can't not tell where that side seam pocket is but okay cool Vlad trousers awesome next we have the oh this website uh Vika Dr oh nope 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 we missed one hold on it's like so sensitive I'm like barely scrolling and it's taking me to the bottom of the page okay Lesia Let's see ya. 12 euros. This dress has a fitted silhouette at the top with a bias skirt that fits the body perfectly thanks to its shape. Lessia dress is decorated with ruffles that flow into the straps on the shoulders. Oh, that's cool. And back. These, there are pockets in the side seams and the dress itself is fastened with two shank buttons on the dress front and with two hidden buttons inside the garment. The skirt's length is just below the knee, but you can shorten it to a mini or lengthen it to a maxi according to your wishes. Okay, this is not translating, but I think this says cotton, poplin, twill. <laughs> I don't know what lin is. Tinsel, denim, um, fabrics. Oh, gosh fabric something 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 ice cream no, I'm just kidding <laughs> I'm just kidding um I don't know what that says I don't know what any of this says oh no oh here we go well I mean there's a lot more fabrics listed here than here all right so you need your fabric here's the quantities um, fusible interfacing, bi-faced fusible interfacing. What is that? Where it's fusible on both sides? Is that what that means? Um, a piece of scrap fabric and your buttons that she mentioned. Sizes 34 to 44 and then 46 to 56. So again, two size ranges and four heights. And it looks like we have the same waist measurements. The bust measurements of this one go to 31 and some change up to 49. Biscuit is hungry. So that's why she's being very vocal. We're almost done, Biscuit. All right, here is the dress. Okay, so what she was saying about the shoulder strap is that this flounce is sewn to the bodice, right? And then this becomes your shoulder. This becomes your strap. There isn't, like the bodice doesn't extend under here. It's sewn into this thing somewhere around here. And then this becomes what holds it to your body. These are the two shank buttons. I imagine the inside buttons are over here somewhere. Uh, 
another bold stripe. It's also really long in the waist. Her waist is right here. Yeah, an inch or so too long in the waist, I think. There's your side seam pocket. Oh, look at the back. I don't know what I was picturing, but that's the back. You can also really tell how long waisted this is here. She does have a lot of curves to her body. And so when something is really long in the waist like this, it's going to bunch up because her hip is going to be pushing the smaller parts of the of this garment up and up and up and up. And so it's kind of like pushing that waist seam up higher because it wants to sit at her natural waist, which is right around here. And so that's what's causing all of this bunching. In this photo, I feel like she's using the pockets to like pull it down a little bit. Um, so it looks nice and flat, but it's really an illusion maybe or a little bit of trickery. But the length is cute and I do genuinely like the design of the dress. Yeah. Yeah, she's cute. Now, just because it's long-waisted on her doesn't mean it's going to be long-waisted on you either. Um, you should be checking your lengths anyways, but... Um, you know, it's just really hard to say, is she naturally short-waisted? Like, we don't have her measurements, so we don't know. All right, then we've got this cute little shopping bag. I've actually been looking for a pattern like this. Mm. I've been going to the farmer's market a lot. So we'll just take a look at the pictures. Yeah, it's kind of perfect, right? Not a lot to it. And you could obviously do something fun with your cricket on this. But we don't have a lot of photos. I just wanted to quickly look at it. We're not going to get a ton of information. But yeah, that's cute. It's got to be easy to sew. I don't know about four euros for that, though. I'd hope maybe it would be free. All right, this is the Misha shirt. Oversized shirt with a soft sleeve and shirt collar. The long sleeves end with wide cuffs with the cuff straps. Cuff straps, cuff straps. I don't know what that means. The cuff can be worn unfolded or folded back over itself to create various looks. Pleats are laid over the armhole right here um, and near the cuffs down here for a more voluminous effect. There is a yoke and pleat on the back of the shirt, like a traditional button-down shirt would have. Left bodice embellishment with a patch pocket with a pleat here. In the center of the shirt front, there is a hidden button placket. Uh, Misha can be worn with jeans, light, or, sorry, tight trousers, and pencil skirt. It will be one of the most loved and versatile garments in your wardrobe. All right, so cotton, cotton twill, linen, tinsel, poplin, cotton twill, chino, flannel, and then obviously like any of your shirtings. But remember, it is oversized, so depending on how you want it to drape and fall in on your body, um, that would depend on the fabric as well. So same size range as the last couple of patterns we've seen, the extended size range. And it is a difficulty three out of five. I'm afraid to see what a five difficulty is. If this is three, <laughs> I don't want to know what a five difficulty is. All right, let's see. Oh, super cool. All right, all right, I get it. Look at that. I mean, that is a deep pleat in the shoulder, but that's what's giving this sleeve so much volume. And then you can see you've got a kind of long cuff there, which she said you could fold back if you want, but also just a really gigantic pleat there. So this is a very sort of high design sleeve, for better or for worse. Um, here is a fun little take on the hem. It doesn't indicate that in the line drawing, but you can see it's got these really kind of sharp angles, almost like a split hem that's been cut away. This feels really cool to me. I don't know what you guys are thinking of it, but I kind of really like this.
yeah, I might, I mean, oh gosh, it's hard to say. I might bring the sleeve up a little bit and make it a little less of a drop shoulder than this wouldn't be so long on the hand. And I think that would help with proportions a little bit. You can see on both of them, this is just like way too long on them. But I just think the body of it and the voluminous sleeve and the back with the pleat, I think it's really cool. I hope that's her mom. That would be sweet, right? Photo shoot with mom. That's also me making a large assumption about both of their ages. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe they're just friends. <laughs> adjusted. Okay, this is the Vika dress. Adjusted dress with invisible zipper at the back. The shoulder line has been shortened so that the armhole can be beautifully warped. That's certainly an issue with the translation. I don't know what that means. Um, I guess it just means the shoulder here, the shoulder length is shorter. So the sleeve cap goes up and over your shoulder cap. That's what I'm going to guess. This dress has darts at the bust waist and back. The dress's skirt is adjusted at the hips thanks to stitched folds around it. I, maybe we'll see that in the photos. Two versions are included, one with sleeves, the other without. You can also change the length of the skirt. All right, here is our fabric requirements. There's an invisible zipper in here somewhere. Um, fine wool, cotton twill, velvet, denim, cotton mesh, Milano, or any firm fabric to get a voluminous skirt, yeah. Something with structure, for sure. And then, this is only the straight size range. Difficulty three out of five. And then here is that size chart. Okay. I mean, this is your quintessential fit and flare. Um, even the plus size girls, I know that there are fit and flare dresses out there available to you. This is nothing new. Um, so don't feel too sad that it doesn't fit in your size range because they are kind of like a dime a dozen. I was hoping to see a close up of these pleats. I think she just stitched the pleats down. I think maybe kind of here you can tell how the pleat doesn't actually open up until the high hip. And there's short sleeve, I'm sorry, sleeveless with the shorter skirt. All right, that's Vika. So now we have Taya, Ta Taya skirt. Not available at the moment. What does that mean? It looks like you can buy it. Okay, we're going to keep looking. I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right, only in French. Maybe that's what she means. It's not available in English. Uh, 36 to 48. So the basic straight size range. Very, um, like, working 9 to 5 vibes. Was that like the early 80s? Um, very Sally Field, <laughs> um, Mrs. Doubtfire even. <laughs> I, I mean, it looks really matronly to me. I do love the idea of a deep pleated skirt, especially like a mat, uh, midi length one, but this one is missing the mark. And I think it's just because she's did so down the pleats, maybe a little too far for my liking. Yeah. All right. That's Taya. Taya. Oops. All right. Now we've got Diana. Um, is she going to open? Oh, here we go. Shirt dress with patch and seam pockets. A yoke allows to have a fold for ease and gives it a shirt dress character. It also has a collar stand and can be tied with a belt at the waist. 
Sides of the dress are finished with slits. You have your choice between two sleeve lengths and a multitude of variations according to chosen fabric. Okay, description. Cotton, rayon, cotton twill, linen, denim, chambray, cotton twill, chino wool, 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 and flannel. Yeah, really for every season here. There's a coat version. I don't know what that means. Long sleeve dress and short sleeve dress. And then it looks like she's got it broken into two size ranges again, but still only the 36 to the 48 size range. Interfacing bias tape buttons. Supplies for the coat version. So there is a coat version. Straight sizes only on this one. So only up to that 45 inch hip. And let's take a look at Diana. So this is what she means by the coat version, which I guess is just like the same as the this version. You just leave it unbuttoned. All right. Pretty picture. Nice close up there of the pockets and the sleeve and side pocket detail. Oh, look how cool that is. Uh, I mean, again, it's not, I was talking about this, what, in last week's First Impression Friday? Like, it's not like I expect for any designers to fully, you know, come up with and design brand new, like, things we've never, ever, ever seen before. Um, but what I am looking for is for them to take these basics that we love and give them interesting details that you cannot find in ready to wear that when people see them, they go, Oh, that looks so cool. You must've made that, you know? Yeah, it is a really cute design. I'm sad. It doesn't go up in sizes. Um, I love the slouchiness of it all. And I really love that side scene. The hem is really cool. All right. I think this is the end, right? Oh, there it is without the belt, which I don't think she shows us. Yeah, she doesn't show us her wearing it with the belt or like really as a dress at all. So you have to kind of just use your imagination for that. Okay, we also have these trousers, Max, the Max trousers. Max is a pattern of extra large and high waisted trousers. It is. Possesses folds at the waist on the front. So, pleats. Uh, pockets at the sides and on the back. It closes with a zipper located at the front and a hook and bar at the waist. Three different lengths. Trousers, culottes, or shorts. I'm excited about these. This looks good. Especially considering she's, you know, got kind of a pear shape. I'm interested to see how she was able to get these to fit. Not how she got them to fit, but how they fit. <laughs> um, okay, so here's your fabric requirements. Lining. Iron-on. I think that's interfacing. Um, this is like a bit of bias for the pocket stays. Zipper, thread, zipper foot, hook and bar for the waist. Um, loose or moderately thick, like wool for suits, velvet corduroy linen for a summer version, denim, cotton twill, chambray, chino, tartan, plaid, or gabardine. You can also go for a fabric with a bit of stretch, but it's not necessary. All right. Size chart 36 to 48. So there you go. That same straight size chart. Let's see what these look like on. I do like the double belt loops. So I hope she shows us those. Um, okay, yeah, you can't really see much there other than the leg line, which is nice. This, I think, is the culotte version. Hand in the pocket. But pretty flat across the front, which is nice. Speaks well to the crotch 
depth and curve. There's the back. You can see there's a patch pocket. It looks a little bit small and also like short, like maybe it could just be longer. And I think there are some back darts back there as well. Lots of hands and pockets. What is that? A pleat at the bottom? Maybe it just got stuck. All right, so yeah, you can kind of see the um, back darts there and the uh, belt carriers also have an X, which is a fun detail. So she doesn't show how high-waisted they are. They do look like the pockets are pulling away from her a little bit, which just happens when you have a curvy body. It's just it's just the way it goes. Um, so maybe what I'm learning after looking at so many of these pant patterns with side seam pockets is that the, the side seam pockets are just never going to stay flat on a curvy lower half. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. And that's okay, too because I know of plenty of other types of pockets to sew, right? All right, that's Max. Next, we have Kirill, Kir Kir oh gosh, Curl. <laughs> the top is a basic essential for your wardrobe, a wide cut with a lowered shoulder line. It's easy model to make even for beginners it's up to you to choose the neck depth and the sleeve length it's a bat wing top perfect just how she did it here we'll look at the pictures in a second but out of a very large print fabric so you can see the most of it as possible without it being cut up um, into a bunch of different seams you really just need thread and a little bit of fabric um, she's talking she's suggesting cotton rayon this cotton plumettis again, do any of my French followers know what that means or anyone who speaks French? Fine wool or why not jersey? Um, honestly, I don't know about wool or cotton for this. I would definitely lean toward the silky types, but if you found a cotton blend, that could be really nice or even like a wool blend. Straight sizes, one out of five on the difficulty chart. Okay, so. Yeah, I mean, it's literally like a square that you sew up the shoulder seams and the side seams and hem it and you're done. Um, there's not a lot to this at all. So if you are more of an advanced sewist, obviously you can use this as a time to work with fabrics you might not normally, difficult fabrics to work with, uh, meaning silks or any kind of specialty fabrics really. And if you're a beginner, this is a great beginner project. All right, so that is a little disappointed again. This, this is 10 euros. That could probably easily be half that. All right, and then we've got one second page. Let's see what's on there. So another, oh, a whole bunch more patterns. Okay, good. So we've got the Dasha dress. Loose dress with three-quarter raglan sleeves and binding at the neck and waist. The ties allow you to adjust the size of the dress at the waist and to open the neckline. Oh, it's adjustable. Well, that's fun. Two versions, one with the ruffle and one without. Cotton, linen, viscose, silk. Pretty straightforward supplies, bias tape, interfacing, thread, straight sizes, difficulty one out of five. Yeah, this is fun. All right, let's take a look at some more of these photos. 
was hoping for something a little closer up. That's all we're going to get. All right, so it's really hard to tell, but you've got this little like channel in the neckline that you feed some kind of like drawstring through, and then you can pull it tighter or loosen it up depending on your preference. And then I think these are just like bias, like bound arm holes. And then this is a little channel casing as well, where you can tighten it or loosen it depending on what you need. That's fun. We've got the Vlada blouse. Come on. Oh, there she goes. Okay. Vlada is a loose blouse with raglan sleeves. A neckline is embellished with an enlarged teardrop slit at the front and a lavalier collar. The gathers all around the neckline give a relaxed and very feminine look. They also add a lot of comfort when moving. Wear it with skirt or pants. Interfacing buttons, thread, here's your fabric. Cotton linen viscose, cotton cambric silk, cotton plumetis again, and our straight sizes. Really pretty. I like the gathers through here. They seem very large and intentional and not like you just made a mistake. <laughs> um, nice sleeve length too. I like that it gathers a little bit or like puddles or whatever you want to call it. Really pretty. Are we going to see those pants? Those pants look great on her. All right, that's Vlada. We've got the Katya skirt. Oh, there are those pants. We're going to get there. All right, apron style wrap skirt with darts on the front and back. Linked waistband with a hidden button. Easy to make and easy to wear. Created as a midi skirt, you can of course shorten it. Uh, fusible interfacing, half one half inch button, and fabric. Suede, amazing jeans or denim, gabardine, velvet, chambray, or jacquard. Yes, and just our straight sizes here. So it is a, you know, pencil skirt, midi length, tie or wrap skirt, a set of darts in the back as well as front. That suede looks really pretty. So she has it on her, um, below her natural waist. I don't know if that's a preference or that's how it was designed. I guess it could go either way, depending on how you sewed it or depending on like what sizes you chose. Here are the Victor pants. Victor is high waisted pants pattern with two pleats at the waist and Italian pockets, which I think we in the States call it slant pockets. A decorative belt is offered. Pants are tapered at the ankle. It closes with a zip located in the front and a button at the waist. An independent belt can be added as the loops are provided to hold it. So you can use this little sash or you can use a purchase belt because there are actual belt loops. Okay, description. So fabric interfacing, braiding fusible bias. Are these all the same when she talks about for pocket entries? It's just like pocket stays. Is that what she's talking about? Zipper, sewing thread, zipper foot, and a three-quarter inch button. 
medium fabrics such as wool suiting, velvet, corduroy, linen, denim, chambray, cotton twill, tartan, or gabardine. Stretch is fine, but not necessary, meaning like stretch twill or stretch denim, something with like 2% stretch in it. She said you can, but you don't have to. So they've got this really cool like little dippity dip in the front. They are high waisted, but have this waist defining waistband and it's a large, tall waistband and then lovely little pleats coming out and then they taper in at the ankle. There's the back. These, those photos in the brown sweater don't totally highlight them. Where's this shirt? That's cute too. Um, and all of these pictures with the hands in the pockets are just killing me. Yep, walking photos. It's just hard to see how something fits. And maybe that's like not the point. Maybe they think that um, it's not important to know how it fits her. I mean, that's an interesting point, right? Maybe we shouldn't care how it fits her. I think maybe that, oh gosh, is that another difference between like our expectation of indie and our expectation of big four? I just want to see a lot more pictures like this where she's just standing still so I can take in everything and I can see, you know, do the pocket skate. Is the crotch curve okay? I, I think it, it does matter to me how it fits her because if it doesn't fit her, the person it was made for, then I don't have a lot of confidence it's going to fit me, at least not with a little bit of work, right? So although these photos are really beautiful, right, in the street and, you know, all of that, this it doesn't really help me see if this pattern is right for my body or not. You know what I'm saying? Let me know if y'all have any thoughts on that. Leave them in the comments. Okay, now we have the Anna skirt. This must just be like a pull-on knit skirt. Anna is a high-waisted midi skirt made in Jersey, which can easily be shortened or lengthened. This easy pattern, perfect for beginners, fast and easy model to sew. So let's just quickly look at these pictures. There is nothing about, <laughs> like hardly any design here at all. Um, it's a tube. All right, and that's it for photos. Nine and a half euros for that. Hmm. I don't know about that, guys. Alex. I think that's that top, that blue top. The Alex dress is very comfortable and casual, made in a wide pattern with large shoulders and long sleeves in a kimono style. Side seam pockets, very comfortable, easy to make, very quickly become a key element of your wardrobe. The sweat, a sweat version is also included. What does that mean? What's a sweat version? Sweater, sweater version? Sewing machine, serger, twin needle, paper and fabric scissors, iron on bias tape, chalk, thread, pins, fabric. Yeah, she really got into detail on there on your list for that one. Uh, mesh, sweat, turn it maybe, <laughs> sweatshirt fleece. Jersey fleece, neoprene. Be careful if you choose a pattern fabric. You must take more fabric for the connections of drawings. Oh man, I don't know what that means. Meaning to match? Yeah, maybe she's talking about matching stripes. Okay, that's what we're taking an educated guess. She's talking about matching stripes. And it is just the 36 to 48 straight sizes only. Yeah, it's like an oversized sweater, drop shoulders, uh, crew neck. Yeah, that looks cute on her. Very cute on her. Um, for the record, it wouldn't be super hard to size this up. Same thing with the skirt we just saw. Like, it would not be hard to make that in 
a gajillion different sizes. That said, though, like, could she spend a couple days doing that for us? Rather than relying on us to do it ourselves? You know what I'm saying? Um, but it is cute. And I do think that sometimes uh, patterns like this can be a little unflattering because they are so big at the top and more fitted at the bottom, especially for someone like her that is does have a curvy figure. She might be more of an hourglass than I am, but I don't feel like this is swallowing her and then this is like, you know, sucking her in. I feel like it's a good balance of both. So Alex is cute. But I mean, the last few patterns... We really lost that sort of, oh, here is the Alex sweater. So it's this that's shortened. <laughs> I don't know why we need two separate. Definitely don't pay nine and a half euros each for those. Just buy one and lengthen one or shorten the other. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but the last few patterns, we've really sort of lost that beginner, that basic with a twist vibe, right? Um, this might be bringing it back a little bit. A very feminine romantic blouse folds around the waist to reinforce the femininity of this silhouette. The sleeves are puffy and decorated with folds at the top and the wrists. When she says fold, she means pleats, um, which give a very feminine and trendy look. The blouse is buttoned at the back of the neckline. Uh, wear it with wide pants to accentuate its romantic look or jeans for a more casual look. So yeah, just a lot of um, pleats that are released to create room for your bodice and for your bust and also for your hips. And then to give a voluminous sleeve, we've got pleats in the sleeve, cap, and at the wrist. Types of clothes to wear it with. That's interesting. Um, all of your notions. A quarter inch button, fusible interfacing, thermo erasable pin, chalk, thread, pins, fabric. Uh, cotton poplin, satin, jersey, linen, viscose, fluid fabrics, but which keep its shape. So this is important. Fluid fabrics, but which keep its shape. So that is sort of a juxtaposition, right? It's sort of like, wait, how can you have both? But you're looking for something that is a little bit structured, but still lightweight, Otherwise, you will sew in all of these pleats and you will never even notice that they're there. The waist pleats are not nearly as fitted as I thought they would be. At least not on her. The This is so cute. Look how cute it looks here. So cute. I love everything about this sleeve. The bodice is not giving me as much as I thought it would, to be perfectly honest with you, but you can really see the construction here. Beautiful facing for this keyhole opening. Oh, that's a Swiss dot. Yeah, it's not nearly as... Um, Fit and flare as I thought, I guess. I don't know uh, what I was expecting, but it's really just, like she said, very feminine. I just love that sleeve. Love that sleeve. Fun, Tasha. All right. Tasha's giving me a little bit more pep in my step again. All right. Sophia dress version B and then Sophia dress version A. Really? Why are we charging 10 euros for both of them when they're clearly the same dress, but one has a ruffle? They both have the same cover. So wouldn't you just want to get the one with the ruffle and then leave it off if you don't want it? Sophia is a summer dress buttoned on the front with a V-neckline. Uh, the low shoulders with a small uh, lapel, I think that means like a folded up cuff type thing. Um, give it a nice casual style, wear it with a belt to accentuate your waist. The shirt dress will become a masterpiece of your summer wardrobe. Two versions, with or without ruffles, give you the opportunity to customize it. I don't know what that other... 
listing is for. If this one gives you the option of leaving the ruffle off. Um, scissors, chalk pins, buttons, one inch buttons. Um, fusible interfacing, matching thread. And then here's the fabric for the without the ruffles and with. Um, fairly soft fabric, linen would be ideal, cotton, cotton satin, cotton poplin, double gauze, and viscose. Be careful if you choose a pattern fabric. You have to um, buy more fabric if you want the stripes to match. And then our straight sizes. Pretty. Oh, over pants. All right, back to the beginning. Yeah. All right. I feel like I probably have at least a shirt pattern designed like this, and you just extend it down and add a ruffle. So I could probably hack this, no problem. But it is a cute silhouette, and it reminds me that I do like those types of dresses, you know, V-neck, loose-fitting, ruffle maybe, with an optional tie at the waist, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's look at Antonina. That's a really pretty name, Antonina. Flared skirt with crossover front. The great advantage of this skirt style is that you have no risk of crossover opening while walking. And that is it for the description. <laughs> Um, and all you need is a zipper, a little eight inch zipper. Oh, sorry. And a one inch button. Medium to heavy weight fabrics with structure such as denim, gabardine, jacquard, velvet, suede, or tweed. For the skirt on the photo, we used jacquard. I'm sure you don't need very much fabric at all. Yeah, a little more than a yard. And even fewer sizes on this guy than any of the others. Although it says it goes up to 48, it looks like she caps this off at 42, which goes to a 41 inch hip. So, so it's a cute little A-line skirt, right? And then it just has this extra little panel that crosses over. It is a cute design. I really do like this design, but there's no way this fits me. There's your eight inch zipper. That's the center back also. And that's your back darts. I love it in white with like a white sneaker. That's such a cute look. Cute. And then our very last pattern is the amber blouse. Amber looks to be like a good time. Loose blouse with three quarter sleeves and V neckline buttoned at the front and embellished with ties at the bottom of the sleeves. Amber is a blouse that will highlight you during your day or evening outings made of only eight pieces. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, but maybe not in the grand scheme of things. I don't know. This pattern is easy and quick to make. Okay. S the skew 001, her very first pattern. Um, sewing machine, scissors, chalk, your fabric, a device with bias. So maybe just some bias tape. I don't know what that means. Pins, buttons, Cotton or polyester fabric, I think. Cotton, gabardine, poplin, chambray, linen, and jeans. Or denim. This does have the full straight sizes here. All right, let's take a look. It does look really cute. Um, this is a decent picture. Again, very long drop shoulder to then fall into a hugely puffy sleeve. 
on the line drawing, it doesn't look nearly that drop, right? Like this is the shoulder point, and then it's only a little bit below that. Like this. <laughs> are those the only pictures we're going to get? Yeah, yeah, those are the best ones. All right, so yeah, I don't know if this this does look a little bit big on her all over, and I don't know if that's the design or not. Um, like. This girl is clearly smaller than the blonde model. Maybe it was made with that model's measurements, and then they just threw it on her and hoping for the best. I don't know. It does seem a little bit big on her. But you get an idea of how it looks. Um, it, well, I say that. It is a little bit hard to see how it looks, right? Like, yeah, either it's tucked in so we cannot see the hem, or it's from far away so we can't really see any detail, or she's walking funny. So, yeah, it's a little hard to tell. Maybe on, like, her Instagram where she's been saying, like, follow me at linoline patterns or whatever. Maybe she has some other photos of them there. But those are the patterns. Um, so what do we think? I certainly, we say this all the time when we look at indie patterns, you can tell kind of like an evolution from their first patterns all the way up to their most recent ones. And I think with her, I don't know if it's more of a product of the pandemic, but I prefer the listings of her more recent patterns. I prefer her just in a studio, um, not doing any fancy field frolicking. You know what I mean? Like I like just straightforward photos, not in a street, not anywhere, you know, just in front of a wall even. Um, the design wise, again, the more recent patterns, probably until we got here to the Vika, were all really nice. Um, maybe uh, some of them, I don't know. Okay. Then I have to pick. So I'm going to say the matte V top Sasha skirt. Cause that's on the bias. Of course. Um, the Diana dress were all great, like basics with a twist. Um, from there, this one was interesting with the, um, adjustable ties. But other than that, we kind of fell into, I mean, this one looks pretty big for also, I would could see this in a McCall's pattern in a heartbeat. So, depends on what your expectations are for indie patterns and what you already have in your stash. Um, some elevated basics here, some very basic basics like this too. So maybe a little bit of something for everyone. I don't know. You guys, let me know what you think about this collection as a whole, um, and if you will be getting any of the patterns. Obviously, also if you've ever sewn one of these patterns. Please, please, please leave a comment. Let me know what your experience was like. Those comments are so helpful to me and so many others as we consider buying some of these patterns. So that is going to do it for me today. I have linked to last week's First Impression Friday video here in the end slate. It's on the bottom right corner. Just tap that box and it'll take you right there. Otherwise, I'll see you all very soon. <laughs> Bye.